Hey guys, Justin here again. Today I'm going to run you through one of the newest products from the Super Tura stable, which is our new LC79 Super Tura 6x6. Now, last year I built the Mega Tura. I come up with a concept uh, with a good mate of mine, Jason from JMAX, to build a 79 series in the six wheel drive and the true fully locked all wheels six wheel drive with a core conversion kit, and we created the Mega 6. Now with the Mega 6, we went completely overboard with that truck. Portal axles, uh, big brakes, uh, airbag suspension, and that thing was really taken to a whole nother level. Now like all the big builds that we do down here, uh, no different than what we did with the Super Ram. So we build that platform to the absolute extreme. We find out what works, what doesn't work, uh, what's gonna cause uh, legality issues and all the rest of it. And then we bring it back a couple of notches and we turn it into a product um, that we're 100% confident in. And something that a customer uh, who buys a product like that from us, they know they're gonna get the reliability uh, when they head out on their big touring trip and they're gonna have nothing to worry about. And this is what we brought it to with this platform on the Super Tura 79 series six wheel drive. As per previous videos, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough from front to back. Um, now we offer this in the standard six wheel drive package. This one here, obviously has got some options fitted. Most customers do option off our standard uh, options list. And I'll point out to you in the video what's an option and what's not. The first question that I know we're gonna get asked and we've been asked uh, a, a fair amount of times now is why a six wheel drive? For what reason? Well, realistically, I think well, there's actually three reasons. Number one, they're just cool. Like, there, you can't take that away from it. The six wheel drives, there's something about them. They have the presence on the road. Um, you really can't take these vehicles anywhere without being stopped and, and people asking questions. And they're, they're just an amazing uh, bit of engineering and, and a really nice product to look at. Number two, I'm probably getting into the nuts and bolts of it, the capability of a six wheel drive. And not all six wheel drives uh, are built like these ones are. A lot of six wheel drives that you see getting around are just for load carrying capacity, so they have a lazy axle at the back. What that means is the axle doesn't actually do anything, it's just there to hold another, another pair of tyres so you can load the vehicle up. So the off-road capability of these are just absolutely amazing. When I first built the Mega 6 and the first big run that we took it out uh, to the Glasshouse Mountains, we put that car through um, you know, a, a, a hill climb that I wouldn't normally put a car of that sort of value through and it just, just churned it up. Like I said, they're, they're a fully locked six wheel drive so you have every single wheel engaged. And when you're running a 35 inch tire, which is the biggest that you can go, this one's running a 33, this was the customer's uh, preference. There's nowhere that you can't take them. The third reason, and, and I think probably the most sort of commercial reason, is uh, load carrying capacity. So obviously with an extra set of tyres at the back there, another axle, um, you've got a lot higher load capacity. And what I'll do quickly now is I'll run you through uh, the GVMs and GCMs that you'll get with a six-wheel drive over a standard 79 series cruiser. We've just taken this one down to the Weybridge yesterday afternoon. This one come in at 3.5 tonne, just over. 3,560 kilos, I think it was off the top of my head. Now, in this form, this one here has a GVM of 4495. So it keeps it just under the four and a half tonne GVM, which means you can drive this one here on a car license. Now, that also gives you a towing capability of four and a half tonnes as well, and the GCM, so gross combined mass of 8.9 tonnes. So you can load this truck up to four and a half tonnes, you can tow four and a half tonnes, but you bundle the two together, you get 8.9 tonne of GCM. So that's some of the technical stuff out of the way. We're gonna do this one a little bit different. I think obviously because of what's going on down the back here, this is what everybody is gonna to wanna to see. Um, we'll start at the back. I'll go through uh, a little bit of the, the coil conversion process, how that works, and then I'll run you around the truck and, um, and show you the options. With this kit here, uh, it's a J-Max coil conversion kit, like I said. Basically what we do is we chop the back of the chassis here, and it's worthwhile stating this is a full replacement chassis. So this isn't a weld-in or a bolt-in system, this is a complete chassis um, replacement. Now what's going on underneath here is you've got actually retained the factory diff at the front of the truck. The rear of the truck is the, the factory uh, centers, so you're retaining all of the factory Toyota locker 
um, which is a big advantage. Uh, you've got a fabricated rear housing, big axles in the rear. And then what you've got in the centre diff is you've got a through shaft. So you've got a soft locker, a nine inch soft locker uh, in the centre of this one with another fabricated housing. How that soft locker works is you don't actually engage lockers in a soft locker. When one wheel starts over spinning uh, the other wheel, the diff centre will lock up and it'll drive both the wheels. So you put in your factory electric locker in the rear, your factory electric locker in the front, your soft locker will do the centre diff all for you. You get into the situation when one wheel starts over spinning in the centre, all six wheels will lock up and maximum traction. Now, like I said before, generally speaking, um, this kit is approved uh, with 35 inch tyres and this is a federal approval on this kit here. The tray has been designed uh, to take up to a 37 inch tyre, which is where we first started with the six wheel drives. We couldn't get compliance for the 37s, but we do have full compliance for the 35s. Running on airbags inside the coils in the rear, so the airbags are just acting um, as helpers. You can run whatever pressure that you like in the airbags, depending on the load that you're towing or what you're carrying up on the tray. And with this kit here, we go with a King Remote Reservoir Shock, um, which are premium shocks, and they ride absolutely uh, awesome. Pcor 17 by 9 inch wheels, negative 25 offset. These ones are in the satin bronze. They're also available in black. The big thing with these, they've got a 1500 kilo load rating. And with that negative 25, that is the maximum track increase that you can legally put on the 79 here in Australia. So check them out as well. They're, they're a really cool bit of gear. Let's have a look at the tray. Whole construction of the Pcor tray is aluminium. Uh, we've got an 85 litre uh, poly water tank up the front. So you can see there's a water tap at the back. Uh, electric water pump with a switch, so you've got pressurised uh, water coming out the back. Like I said earlier, this customer is fitting his own accessories. We're putting a half canopy on this this afternoon before it's delivered, but I wanted to show you this, and it's, I suppose it's raw as form. You can see the holes in here, uh, fold up sides, which would come uh, standard if you didn't want to fit anything on top of the deck. With the 6x6, they're basically 1.2 metres over standard, so you've got a 3 metre long tray by 1.8 metres wide. You can put a, a two seat side-by-side uh, -side up on there, one of the smaller ones, one of the early model ones, a couple of ATVs, whatever gear you like. This one's got a Brown Davis long range fuel tank um, fitted underneath as well. Rear drawer, like all the P-Core systems, everything is central locking. Uh, works with the central locking obviously in your main cab, so when you jump out the car, push the button, any toolboxes that are on the, uh, on the truck will be locked. Um, you can see in here, big rear drawer. Switch in here for the water pump, so that'll turn your water pump on and off. Rear winch is built into the cradle and obviously your standard towing hitch. Anderson plug uh, for towing is obviously on the back and your standard sort of trailer plug. LED lights and then your side toolboxes. Again, central locking, all aluminium, non-corrosive. So the materials that we use in this and it, it does wonders for the GVM as well. So. Aluminium versus steel, obviously the biggest advantage is going to be your weight, number one, uh, but your second advantage is aluminium's non-corrosive. It's going to last a lot longer um, than untreated steel. Uh, walking past the headboard, it's probably worthwhile just having a quick chat about that. This is the standard uh, P-Core headboard. Uh, you've got LED lights at the top. Uh, you've got rear lights, side lights as well uh, for finding a campsite. They come in really handy. You've got a water filler up on this side, diesel filler on the other side. All these holes are located here to take a couple of different PCOR accessories. So we have a few different spare wheel holders available, uh, high lift jack holders. A sort of trademark um, hexagonal uh, laser cutting, uh, which is something we come up with a couple of years ago. Again, the whole headboard is sheet metal. Everything in the PCOR system is manufactured right here uh, on site, Australian designed. Moving forward a little bit, I suppose the first thing that I'm gonna touch on here is um, the color. Of, of this truck. And again, I can call this one a truck, I think, because it's a six wheel drive. The Merlot Red, I'll be honest with you, never ever been a big fan of Merlot Red. Um, and I don't know why, it's just, just been a color that I've steered away from. I think this is the first Merlot Red Super Tour that we've ever built. And I'm just absolutely wrapped with this color. I think this is one of the classiest looking builds that we've ever done. The Merlot Red uh, with the black decals, the bronze wheels, we were going to take all the chrome out of this truck, but it was, a, it was a call that I said to the boys, I'll make that right at the end. But I think just those little highlights of uh, chrome with the Merlot Red, um, it just looks absolutely amazing. Check it out, guys, Merlot Red. Consider it if you're looking at buying a new 79. Once you go to this sort of extent, I think, like I said, this is just a really classy looking build. Um, 
What I might do is I'll whip around and I'll run you through all the standard stuff that comes on the Supertura six wheel drive and then we'll start pointing out the options that this customer uh, has put on. So let's go up the front. T13, TJ and Bulba on the front, standard on all Supertura builds on the 200s, uh, the 79s and the Rangers. 63 mil top hoops. Got a 12,000 pound uh, torque winch in the front from TJM and a matching one in the rear. 12,000 pound might be a little bit light on, on this particular truck with the GCM that it has. If you were towing uh, your maximum tow at four and a half ton, you'd want to go something a little bit bigger like a 16 and a half thousand pound worn, which we can do. Obviously fog lights, you've got the GME whip at the front, uh, which goes with the XRS uh, GME UHF. I'll show you that a little bit later on. You've got an AirTech snorkel, TJM sidebars, TJM side steps with the Patriot Campers uh, platform there, all dimple dyed and the logo in. All Super Tourers, Land Cruiser Super Tourers, I should say, uh, come with towing mirrors, so you can pop these out, um, pop them in, and you can fold them out the way um, as well. So that's about it for your standard gear on the um, on the Super Tourer six wheel drive. Let's, uh, let's maybe get into a few options. This is our new twin stacked uh, 600 mil light bars. So we've developed these uh, brackets on the side here uh, for X-ray. Got a 600 mil spread at the bottom and a 600 mil pencil at the top. 300 mil shoulder lights, I've said in other videos, those shoulder lights are really to project the light out onto the sides to the shoulder of the road. Uh, if you're gonna collect uh, an animal, they're definitely gonna come in sideways. Very rarely will you see one coming straight down um, straight down the road at you. A uh, little bit of a debate on um, HIDs versus LEDs. Uh, I'll tell you this from my uh, perspective, LEDs are always gonna give you a much cleaner, much broader spread of light. If you wanna get way up the road, you wanna say what's a kilometre or two kilometres up ahead of you, you can't beat a HID. HID is always gonna give you the projection. Generally speaking, for my own personal vehicles, I'll go with uh, both. LED technology is getting better and better. Uh, X-ray brand with the quad optics, they're at the top end of the market, um, but they're the only light bars that we fit to our superturas and they're the one that we, we trust the most. Uh, again, you'll see the, the little highlights of the chrome that we've left. Uh, it's got a supertura grill in there as well, so that's, that's uh, one of our products. Coming around the side of the truck, um, we've painted out standard uh, fender flares. We'll come in, um, come in silver on the Merlot red truck, we've painted them out in black. So it's all the little details that we do on the trucks that really make all the difference when you see everything kind of come together. The last option that I'll talk, uh, talk about uh, for the external is the Rhino Rack uh, Pioneer platform. It's really, the, the Pioneer platform has become uh, just one of those go-to accessories. I think we very, very rarely build uh, a Super Tourer these days without fitting one of those as an option. They're just so versatile. But you'll notice on this one, this one has got the new Pecor uh, side rails which by the time this video launches, uh, they should be available uh, on the Patriot Supply website. What they do is give you the ability to mount uh, lights on the side. So we've got uh, 250 mil lights up the side there by X-Ray. You can flick them on uh, inside the cabin. So if you're cruising around off-road and you're looking for a campsite at night, you can really just project light out the sides and obviously handy uh, whilst, you're setting up, um, whilst you're setting up camp. Quickly run through the engine bay on this one uh, and the front end and then we'll jump in the interior and we'll have a talk about the options in there. This one here is, uh, is fairly standard. Dual battery setup in this one. Uh, if you have a look in here, one of the things that you don't see that goes inside of a Supertura, uh, like I've said again in previous videos, but I keep harping on about it because I think it's so important. Everything electrical is in one location. You've got all of your MIDI fuses. Everything is labelled on the Supertura. Worthwhile noting as well, one of the upgrades that we're doing is standard with the six wheel drive kits is a, a J-Max brake booster. So it gives you uh, a lot more clamping pressure on the, on the braking system. Like I mentioned before, uh, you've got standard, um, standard Toyota brakes. And we might talk about the front end while we're, while we're up here. Uh, two inch lift on this, on this truck, which I didn't mention before. Uh, remote reservoir shocks in the front and J-Max radius arms as well. So the radius arms are correcting the caster um, from the lift in the 79. I will, I will say this though, on a 79 series cruiser, um, put a clutch in it before you go on a big trip. Some clutches are lasting like 50,000 Ks. I've done a clutch at like 3,000 Ks in a brand new 79 series cruiser. I wouldn't risk it. For me, I think one thing you just have to do when you buy a cruiser is put a decent clutch in it. We're using like 1,300 pound MPCs. Uh, the clutch pedal feels actually a little bit softer than the standard clutch, so um, they're a good thing. All right, so let's, um, let's get into the interior and I'll, uh, I'll show you through the modifications that we've done in there.
I've got to say for this particular customer, which we work really heavily with the customer on, I'm really trying to recognise what are the features or what are the options that that particular customer needs. One option that I think is worth every dollar is uh, we sound deaden the whole interior of the truck. So we rip the whole interior out, uh, doors off. Um, the only thing we leave in is the actual main carcass of the dash, but everything underneath it comes out. And we sound deaden the floor pan inside the doors, the roof, the firewall, and the back of the truck. Another couple of options if your budget allows for it, uh, the standard 79 series front seats, uh, the, the, they're not very nice when you're on a long trip. Uh, we only option Recaro's, there's a couple of other brands out there. Recaro's is a seat that, that we've been really familiar with and something that I personally use. These ones have got lumbar support in them uh, as well. The other big advantage of these is they've just got a little clip on the side and they'll fold all the way forward when you're accessing in and out the back. Um, that comes in quite handy. Overhead T console is not, look, it's, I wouldn't call that a must. I wouldn't say that's something that you have to have, um, but that's an option that, that utilises um, the whole roof space um, in the truck. You've got pockets up in here, and I'll generally, when I'm touring, I'll have all these pockets full of my day-to-day -day sort of stuff. I might have uh, multi-tools, torches, anything that I need to regularly access. Gives you a really good position uh, to mount your UHF, which uh, GME XRS is the only one that we're using at this point in time. I haven't found anything better on the market. Uh, you've got some reading lights in there. All of your switches are up in here as well, so this is activating all of your lights and your front lights. We fit into all of our overhead consoles as well, uh, USBs and cigarette sockets. So I've got USBs here, I've got USBs here, and same for the passenger. Um, for me, it's all about keeping the cockpit as clean as possible. I can't stand seeing wires. I, I, I absolutely hate it. Um, so everything that we put into, into the truck is, is hardwired in. HEMA HX1 comes standard um, with all Super Tura builds. Uh, we developed this bracket at the back a long time ago, and that's hard powered uh, into your car's ignition as well. So you turn the ignition on, HEMA comes on, turn it off, your HEMA goes off. There's no legal requirement to have a rear view mirror and with the side mirrors and, and generally speaking, 90% of the time our customers have a canopy on the back. So your centre mirror is um, not, really, not really used. This customer's also gone for another big option, um, which is the Alpine stereo system. Splits in the front, speakers in the rear, sub, amp, and the Alpine uh, head unit, which is an awesome bit of gear. I won't get into this in, in this video because that's going to be, that'll be an hour video on its own. You can see down here again, keeping everything really nice and clean. Uh, we've got twin Brown Davis fuel tanks in this, not one actually, like I said before. So this has got a switchover pump in here. I can go from the main tank to the auxiliary tank. The main tank will work on your standard fuel gauge. The auxiliary tank is running off of this LED indicator down here, so you know exactly how much diesel you got left. And another really good option for this one here, I'll just flip the ignition on and air compressor is on. So this has got an onboard air compressor inside the um, inside the PCOR tray and I can manually inflate and deflate either side uh, of the truck. So I can adjust uh, on the fly as if I get on torrigations and I slow my speed down, you know, and I'm fully loaded, I can just on the fly, I can start dropping air out of the airbags um, and get, get myself riding uh, how I want to be riding. But the other big advantage of that is when you're at a campsite, and especially if you've got a, uh, a camper on the back or even a rooftop tent, on the campsite, I can level from left uh, to right to a certain extent. Um, that's about it really for the cockpit. I might do what's kind of becoming a bit of a trend and jump in the back seat of this one just to show what I was talking about with the kids before. Um, this is not something that we plan, but it's kind of been happening in every video. So we, we may as well do it in the back of this one as well. So let's jump in the back. All right, the back of the 79. Uh, before I get in there, I might show you something. So these little levers for the seats is like I was um, telling you about before. If anybody's had a 79 with standard factory seats, when you want to fold the back seat down and the headrests are on, you know you've got to go around and slide each seat. So that, that is kind of handy. So rolling the back seat up, uh, this is the stereo insole uh, that we're doing. Like I said, you've got a 10 inch sub uh, in the back there, the Alpine amp, and you can see uh, you can see that aluminium foil there. That's the sound deadening that we do as, as an option. You can actually see it just inside the carpet down there. I don't know if the camera can get in there, but you can see that the whole interior is fully sound deadened and it makes a massive, massive difference uh, in the 79. So folding that up, I might, um, I'll fold this seat up so you get a, a, good, um, a good view. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. So I haven't moved that seat. That's in, uh, that's in that, the position that I would drive in. 
And uh, I'm not the tallest bloke in the world, but I can't, you know, there's no way I could sit in this for days on end. You're upright, you're completely vertical in the back. I can't get my knees in behind the seat, so I'm literally, I've got a knee wedged in between the seat and the door here. You can imagine if, um, you know, my boys are taller than me now, so they're, they're, they're bigger than I am. Their legs are uh, higher than I am, and the three of them in the back here, it's just, it's really, it's just not fair on the kids. Um, all right, that's about it for the back seat. I'll jump back out. There it is, the brand new LC79 Supertura 6x6. We've taken everything that we have learnt from possibly one of Australia's biggest touring builds ever. Merlot Red is, is a colour that, that I think on my next 79 series, I think this will probably be the, uh, the box that I check. I've got to say, uh, this specific customer has really taken the time um, to think through this build. I think every option that has gone on to this build definitely serves a, a purpose. I can't wait to see this thing completed and out on the roads. For more information, obviously contact the sales team here or check out pcore4x4.com.